Hey there, it's me, Red Knight, and welcome back to Heyday and my Heyday channel. Now, for today's video, I'm going to be doing a little activity that's very, very unusual for me, and that's showing you how I actually make a video from start to finish. Now, I did a live stream the other day on Facebook where I could interact with my audience while I was working at the same time, and I thought it was a good fun. So today, I'm going to be doing the same kind of thing by making a video uh, while recording my actual screen using QuickTime Player. So I am at home at the moment for the next 30 days and I will be making a lot of different videos during that time and I hope you like this one. Now today's video is going to be focusing on the Heyday Town. As part of the Heyday Town there is a user interface that needs to be highlighted and shown off and given you information. Now I've already decided what I want to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this image over here and basically make it into my thumbnail. So I'm going to open it up first of all. <clears throat> that then opens up the beautiful image as you can see there on my screen. You can see I've already taken a screenshot of one thing I want to do down in the bottom here. Uh, there are the actual green icons for when my build or visitors have been collected. You'll see that there's the grocery store in the center there with the green icon as well, highlighting what I want to have in the video. Now I need to change the sizes, so I'm going to go into the sizes and I'm going to change the sizes here to 3840 and then 2160. They are the sizes that are ideal for creating image when you are first setting up the video. For posting as a thumbnail, no. So I'm going to say OK on that one. And then we're going to save that one. And then I will then close it off to remove that and allow me to modify it a little bit more easily. When I open it up, you'll see that the image is now stretched and it's very, very different indeed. Now what I need to do is to start adding in some more information and I've got some other imagery over here as well that needs to be done as well. So there's this one here that has the tailor part there and I'm going to highlight that section in this case and I'm going to crop that one so copy and paste in this case, close that one off and then bring that into my image as well and it's very very small. Then I'm going to take the second image which is over there as well, same situation it's the same image basically but there's a subtle difference in relation to the tick marks so I want that one as well close that one off and then bring that into my image now the other two images I don't need those anymore so I'm going to stick those into the rubbish bin and just get rid of those for later and then expand on this one a little bit more as well Right, now they are the two imagery that I've chosen and I want to place them in such a way that they are identifiable as the imagery that is important to me. So let's boost up their size at the moment. Now before I actually do much more, I want to decide on how I want to give a title on this one. So if I come up here to the settings and I go to markup, it then allows me to bring some text into the text. At the moment it's down as a blue, I can change the color later. So I'm going to give this one a title. And I need to think about the title. So what would be an ideal title for this video, I wonder. Now it's to do with the visitor help. Uh, so, okay, let's call this one uh, Town Visitor Help. <clears throat> right, now this one I'm going to call it the Town Visitor Help, and then people can come and see. Uh, but it doesn't really explain that uh, what does it mean. So I'm going to change it a little bit more, and I'm going to type in uh, user interface on this one. So we need to extend that a little bit more because of the text size. Now what I can do is have the text highlighted on the imagery here, but at the moment it kind of like uh, doesn't really stand out. So what I want to do is maybe make it a little bit bigger. So we can enlarge the text on that one. Oops, let's make the image smaller. It's, it's simpler on that one for me. You can see everything in more detail. Okay, there we go. Now I want to make the text a little bit bigger. So I'm going to adjust this one up to, let's just say 200 or 175 in this case looks pretty good. Yeah, let's see how we go with a bit of a color on that one. If I change it to white, does it stand out? Yes, it does with a nice green background. Now I've got these two imagery here that I wanted to highlight. Now they are a key part of this. So I'm still going to make those a little bit bigger as well. And then I'm going to make that one also bigger. Let's try and match the sizes as much as I can as well. And there we go on that. 
Now I want to put something around those two. Okay, so it gives it a nice little border effect. There we go. A nice little bit of white border around the edge there. And the same on that side. That takes away that horrible coloration. Just quickly copy and paste that one and then bring that over as well. You'll see because of the arrows there that I've got, if I slide that out of the way, this image I can match it up in the center of it so it centers it for me. And I slide it over a little bit. And then as I bring this one in as well, because it's basically the same side, you'll see again the little yellow line to center it and it matches up perfectly. And there we go. We have a nice little uh, user interface there, which is very, very beneficial. So that's what I want. Now I've got that down there. I'm going to save my work for the moment. Let's just close that as well and then reopen it again. Now the reason I like to close it and open it because it actually stops me from having issues with my imagery later. Now what I can do is duplicate my image if I wanted to. If I duplicate it then if I make a mistake I can go back and correct it later if I have saved it. Right now I'm going to go into my games folder which is over on the corner here and there's my Red Knight logo there. I'm going to click on that one bring that one down into the image as well. And then I'm going to go into my heyday folder over there as well and go down to logos and I'm going to find the heyday logo that I use and bring that one over as well so we've now got that image okay now the logos itself are important but they're not overly important okay we all know it's heyday and that's the kind of thing you're seeing on my channel however it's still nice to have the logos on there to differentiate whose videos you are looking at so the key thing is to make sure that you've got the title there that's easily seen, you've got the main information. Now I want to make it a little bit more interesting as well. So I'm going to add in some of the human characters. Now I've got a lot of imagery down here that Supercell Heyday team has supplied me. Uh, as a content creator, I can get all of this. In fact, many people can have access to these imagery as well, as long as you are using them for uh, making content that is within the terms of service. Now, if I look down here, you'll see I've got the strong man, uh, and if I can find the strong man within my list of characters I've got there, <coughs> I can add him into this imagery as well. So I'm going to clip and bring him in. And there we go. Now, the great thing about imagery, you can change the size around. So I'm going to change him over on this one. And there he is, nice little face down in the corner. He's one of the characters indeed that relates to this. So it's referencing to this. Um, and basically, it's relating to the town. So it helps you understand the town a little bit more. Now, I could add in more imagery here, but I'm not going to do that. Now, what I'm going to do is shrink the image down. So by shrinking the image down, when I look at it does it stand out okay well the town title is still very very clear indeed I can see the town visitor very clear the actual boxes that you'll see there are not so clear but it is definitely part of the imagery and having the strong man there kind of brings that out as well now as I zoom in and I have a look okay it, it becomes a little bit more clearer as well the words tailor the name the grocery store they're not so important but it's those green icons that do stand out so what I'm going to do here as well is maybe to highlight those icons. That way they are easy to see as well. Now let's just change the circle. And I think what I will do is make the circle a slightly different color, wrong one. And we're going to go into here and let's say make that one a red. So we've got this one there. We're highlighting it here. And if I copy and paste again to keep the same size, and then we do this one here as an example. So we can now see that there is a difference between the two. And we do a little arrow, I think, as well to show that there is the change there. Bring that over to the side like that. And maybe make it a little bit of a curve and bring it up a little bit more. And then bring that over to there a little bit more. Now the arrow itself is still very, very small. Let's change the thickness and the size on that one and bring it in. We change the thickness and size on that one, bring that one in as well. And then do the same on this one down here. Uh, come on. Okay, there we go. And change the thickness on that one as well. Now there we go. 
<coughs> you're now focusing on the centerpiece. So if I then zoom out a little bit more, you can see that the arrow is pointing at two circles down there. So that draws my eye straight to those imagery. I know it's the town visitor helper UI. Now use interface, maybe people don't understand what that means. Okay, so I'm tempted to remove that. Uh, and take it out. The only trouble is because it's saved, I can't do that. That's what I meant by actually copying, pasting imagery and saving and duplicating before you do it. But I'm happy with the way that one looks. Now I could, if I wanted to, to underline that one. So we change the color back on that to white. And if I wanted to, I could actually add in a beautiful white line under that one as well to highlight the title. And it doesn't have to go the whole distance, but part of the distance still looks pretty good. And if I go smaller as well, that makes that stand out in some ways. It doesn't really detract from the image, uh, but it does highlight it as well. So I, I like that one, I really do. Now my question is, do I keep those as red or do I change them back to white? So I'm gonna test that one and see how it looks. I'm using white already. The only trouble is if I contrast it against the other one, the white doesn't really stand out on the yellow background. So let's go change this one again and try a different color. So we're gonna change that one to, let's just say a blue, okay. Now, blue is a little bit better on that one, but again, it's not really the best one. I think red was the best choice to start with. So I'm gonna come back to the red on that side and leave that as it is. Right, as far as I'm concerned, that image is now good. So I'm gonna call this one uh, Town Visitor Help UI uh, Cover. And then I will just save that one to my desktop. Make sure it's definitely saved on that side and that is now good. <clears throat> right, close off the other imagery. So what I've got now is this one. I've got part of a video I use for recording something else which is the bunny too because I'm making the bunny video. And I now need to turn that into a video and that's what I'm going to do. So if I click on down here, close off my QuickTime player. Nope, sorry, leave that one on because I'm making a video. Ooh, don't want to do that one. Click on iMovie and I'm going to drag it over into that section there. So iMovie is a software I use for this one. Now iMovie came with my MacBook, so I'm very lucky on that side. Uh, you can see some other imagery I use down there for different games that I'm playing. What I'm gonna do is just bring that down for the moment and then drag those two over into this 2018 folder I've got there. I should really update that one, shouldn't I? Right, over in the corner here, you'll see the cycle ticking around. That's just loading the video to the screen and that is now done. I can then drag that down into the bottom. So there goes my cover first of all, and I like to make that about eight seconds or so to start with, uh, especially if I'm not actually explaining it and it's going to be a voiced over one. If it's a voiced over one, uh, then I may actually make it like 15 seconds um, or so, then I can explain what I'm gonna do as a nice little video option. I'll then bring this video down here into this one. Now this one's nine minutes and three seconds long. Now if I wanted to, I can remove the recording audio from the back like this. That takes it away and then I do that. That makes the file a lot lighter. I don't always need the audio there because I'm not using it. And this one here is, you can see that like the cut is not so good. So the imagery there is very nice, the cut's not so good. Now what I've got to do is highlight that, go up into the top here on the bar and it says cropping. I need to fit that to screen. That now brings in the whole game and I can actually see everything, which is very good. The intro there is you'll see there's a bit of a difference between the two, there's a black border. So what I will do later is use one of the transitions, which is probably the doorway, place that one down there. So when I do actually play the video, you'll see that it kind of like goes from one, opens up, and then gives me that gorgeous video in between. And that makes it a little bit better as well for what I want to do. And I've got different options down there to choose from. All right, let's go back to closing that section off in a moment. Now, I don't need all of this. It's not important for me. Uh, what I'm only going to do is take a certain part of this video and use that as my recording. So uh, I'm looking for the town section and you'll see down here, there's the part of the town I want. Uh, there's the helper section there. And I'm going to start from this section just over here. So just there, I think. No, we go forward a little bit more. A little bit more, there we go. 
Now I'm just going to remove all of that before I don't need it. So that's reduced the length of the video. And you can now see that I've got my town there, train coming in. Uh, I'm collecting my visitors and other bits like that. And you'll see there that I'm picking up passengers from other people and then bringing them all to my actual game. And then I come down to the section there where I've got visitors serving, put them all to the building. And then I finally get down to the main part of the video where you'll see I've requested help and now it's being done. So it's only a short section, but there's the build up to it as well. So that's that part. I then come back to my main imagery there or my media and I want to bring my ending in as well. Uh, so I add my ending there. Now for the video I've got other parts there which are not necessary. So I'm going to go back on that side and I'm going to trim that out as well. So we go back to the town. Don't need the board part there. That's good enough. <coughs> we'll remove that section as well. That's reduced it down to 5 minutes 14. Now the ending part there, I want about 20 seconds or so. So 20, 25 seconds is good. And that way I can add any imagery into it I wanted to as well at the end of the video. Place that doorway down there and then place the doorway down there. And now what I have is a video that is doing pretty nicely indeed. Now what I then need to do is to start adding my voice and I'm not sure if that part's going to work because I'm recording and recording. Now I would normally click on this button down here that would then add up the information and then it would do. Now what I can do is leave it open like this so I can extend it a little bit more and that allows me to split the imagery and open it up a lot more so I can see what's coming. That way when I actually start recording my voice uh, I know what's due within the first few minutes or so. So let's go and enlarge that one. It makes it much easier for me to do the recording um, and you can now see everything in full detail. If I bring that down you can see the video I'm making <coughs> and we go on to this one. Right, let's see if this works. Click on the audio side there. Will it allow me to record over? I don't know. Let's try. Mm, so you're going to see some numbers come up in a moment and that will highlight what I'm going to say. So ready, steady and press it. Hey there, it's me Red Knight and welcome back to my Heyday channel for Heyday videos for, and Heyday pop videos. Now for today's video I'm going to be focusing on the town visitor helps. In this video you'll be able to see what's involved in requesting help, playing the game and a lot more. Now I don't like what I've just said there so I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to go back and slide on down and I'm going to remove that and start it again. Now that's fine, I just go back, I do it one more time and I reintroduce it and I do it again and it's kind of cool like that and you would be doing this many many times until you're satisfied. Now I know some people they like to cut and splice and add it in, I'm not always keen on that. Occasionally I may cough, I may have background noise but uh, I'm not a professional, I'm an amateur, uh, the way I make my videos is fun for me and this is my hobby. Uh, I suppose if I had better equipment and I were more professional I would be more meticulous with my videos but at the end of the day it's more about the content and my enjoyment and hopefully providing you with enjoyment that's more important. So let's try that one again. Hey there, it's me Red Knight and welcome back to my Heyday channel for Heyday videos and Heyday pop videos. Now today I'm going to be focusing on Heyday and we're looking at the town visitor help user interface where you can request help and see if you've been done or not. Right now as we head on over to the town you'll see there are some visitors that are already within my town that I requested help for. I'm going to say thank you, send the goods to the buildings and later that will be done. Visitors that have been picked up, I'll collect the rewards, I'll go to my chest that's floating, do that, and have a look to see if I've got any people that are ready. Now what I'm trying to do at the moment is to make sure I've got completed buildings. There's a derby ongoing. Uh, I'm not really worried about part visitor buildings, waiting for visitors. I prefer tasks that have all of my buildings done. So I will use the user interface, which is the town hall building, to collect all of the gifts from those that are partly done, leaving the full ones ready for later. I then use the town interface in the town hall again to actually go in there and send the visitors I've got to the buildings. So the ones with the green tick marks are the ones that have already 
done. The uh, building without the green tick mark is the building that's still remaining. Now, you could have visitors for one building, two buildings, or three buildings. Everybody has their own playing style. I'm in no rush with that, and my preference is one or two buildings. For the derbies, I'd like to be able to turn them around quickly, especially with a one building visitor. And that I have to go and pick up from my hoodies. So to do that, I come down to my personal train. I then go over. I find the building visitors that I would like. I highlight those ones. I'm not always going to choose the B&Bs because they take a long time. I maxed out. I can collect 10 passengers. I've done what I want from that person. I then go over to the next person and I collect the building visitors from them as well until I have 10 in total. Right, once I've collected my 10, we click the train, close that off, go back to my station as well. The personal train will return and arrive. Now, if you wanted to, you can use boosters on this as well, and it will turn around the cycle for my train. My train's turnaround cycle is not very long either, which is good. And oh my goodness me, I need some more feed, so I better start that. I'm using helpers at the moment, so I'm not interrupting their cycle, uh, but I should add some in later. Right, now those visitors are starting to arrive. Again, I will use the town hall, the user interface to send it to the buildings and then they will be ready for me to go and service. Now, if I were to tap on the buildings to try to serve the visitors, it would collect the ones that are there that are waiting. So using the town hall is really, really important. It allows you to collect gifts. It allows you to adjust the settings inside to see what is going on. Uh, it allows you to make requests. It allows you to send visitors away without actually collecting from your buildings. So keep that in mind. So you're seeing here I'm jumping from building to building to building, serving the visitors that I can do. Uh, and then going back to the town hall interface again and then serving the one and working from building to building and serving those. Right, so this is pretty cool, I like the way that that's working. Now you'll see down there, there's a green one that I've requested help on. I can't do it. Now I usually request all of the helps I can. Uh, I then often go back to my farm, collect the resources of the ones I can do as well, maybe request for my hoodies. Anybody that I can't do, if I can make it quickly, I do it. If not, I just send them away. At the end of the day, it doesn't really bother me if I can or can't do them completely. The choice is yours on it though. Uh, and it's down to you as an individual. Now I'm requesting help on these. Now in the past we'd have to come back and check and check and check. You can see there from the interface you've got the exclamation mark. Uh, at the moment it just says there's one visitor that's not requested, three visitors that are requested. I go back to my farm, I collect the resources I need, see if I've got anything else. There's items down on my machines but I don't have any of those items ready. But I can do the wheat. I'm growing that one again. So yeah, there we go. Plant a little bit more, collect that one and and we can then do the order. Right, I got the green tick marks down there. Now, I wish this part would change. I'd love this to say if it's been filled or not, or if it's a green request. I think that should be modified. Now, I've had a visitor, so I picked up another passenger. If I come to my board day, you can see that none of those visitors have been done yet, which is fine. I go and serve the one visitor that's still waiting. And if I look at the board here, you'll see it change in a moment. So I'm just going to come and do those, and it will give me a little pop-up message. So there we go. Nettie has helped me, helped me, helped me. And you'll see that the actual green tick mark has now changed. So the exclamation has become green. I can see from looking at the interface here that the visitor has been done. And I can then go there, say thank you very much, use the goods that she's given me and serve those visitors. Now, I don't get the rewards. She does. She gets the XP, any rewards for those people. And it allows me to turn around the passenger, which is very nice indeed. Okay, that's basically it for the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed me covering the town hall there and the user interface for the visitors. Make sure you request and use it for the visitors so you can see what's been done. But if you do like the video, there's a couple more here to watch as well. There's also my subscription button, so make sure you subscribe to my channel and do hit that beautiful bell notification. Comment down below and I'll see you in my next video or on my live stream. Thanks very much for joining me today. And for those of you watching the other video, I hope you like what I've just done. See you. Right, now I've just made that video. Hopefully it recorded both of them as I'm doing this, and I'm happy with the way that that's actually done. Uh, I'm going to kill off the dumb part there so I don't make a mistake and over record. If I now bring the imagery up here, you'll see that there's the imagery for the thumbnail. There's the actual video I recorded and talked over, and there's my voice down there at the bottom. 
Now, if I wanted to, I could go back and remove the beginning part there and then shorten that, but I don't need to. I think that's fine. If I slide on over to the end, you'll see that my actual thumbnail goes over. So what I can do is to actually shorten that a little bit and bring that so it's more in line with this. Now, still about 20 odd seconds, so 22 seconds, so that's fine. And it makes it a little tighter there as well. Right, I've now got that video there. I need to turn it into a video that is a combined video. So I'm going to click on the first one, control A for everything. Let's just reduce this down so you can see what happens. Now at the moment, you'll see that there's nothing over here off to the right hand side. I'm going to come up here and click on this little one here. It says file. I like to save it to my desktop first of all. So I'm going to come down there, change that to the title. So hey day. Town visitor or oh, helper UI. Um, and I'm going to highlight that one, copy that one, and then place that in a description as well. Tagging that one, change that from heyday to heyday. There we go. And then click on next. Now you'll see it's going to be at five minutes. Uh, estimated size is about 844 megabytes. Sometimes they can be gigabytes. It depends. The bigger they are, the longer they take to process. So I wonder how long this one's going to take. So you'll see down there, I've got the basic information. If I quickly slide through that, I can see everything there and I can quickly double check, but I can't hear the voice. And I'm gonna say next. Now the next will then say, save that to my desktop. I'm gonna say, save that one. That will now process. You'll see the imagery come up on the side in a moment, and that will be there as well. At the moment, it's a double file option, and later that will be the one. Now, if I click on the circle icon up here, it will then show my activity and that will then tell me how long this is going to process. So in total, we're looking about nine minutes there. So that's a long time for it to actually take the process. Uh, it does tick down. Uh, whether you want to watch it as it's doing it, the choice is yours, but you've got a basic idea on now what's involved with me actually making a video. I hope you enjoyed this. Now, I'm going to be uploading this to my channel as well. And uh, and then you can watch it. Uh, I might actually make another video on how I actually upload it to my channel as well so you can see what's involved and you can see the final part of the process until you actually look at it on your channel as well. Uh, maybe I might even show my data as well. I'm not sure on that one, uh, but uh, we can watch it together and chat and then do a little bit more. Okay, right, I'm going to end this video now. If you enjoyed this one, comment down below in the video description. Uh, if you have any questions, please do ask as well. The software I'm using to make the video is my iPad, uh, which I then use with QuickTime to make the video. Uh, once I've got the video down there, you're then seeing how I'm using other software like uh, the photos down here to actually edit the imagery with preview. Uh, I then use uh, iMovie to then make it and add my voice. Once I've done that, I then upload it to the internet. Okay, it's easy, it's difficult, it takes a bit of time sometimes, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment, and have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye now.